Hey everyone, I completed the bingo board. The Pride manga readathon is officially over and I have completed 25 volumes for it. My goal was 30, but my low key um, goal was just to complete it. Of course, knowing me, I definitely, definitely um, kind of read a lot of them at the end <laughs> to catch up, so that was kind of a mess, but um, yeah, I will go over what each bingo is really fast, and then we'll get to the wrap-up. I just decided not to do a vlog, because every single time I vlogged, I was like either delusional or I was complaining about how much I worked. Um, during the last week, I worked um, 86 hours. <laughs> And I went to a wedding dress, like, try-on thing. She found the dress. It was actually the first dress she tried on. So that was super exciting. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I had a really good week that week. Um, besides working so much, but everything went smoothly. Um, I was just really tired and burnt out. So I didn't, when I vlogged, I was just so delusional and tired that I, like, it feels like I was complaining. So I don't want that in my vlog, like, on my channel. So I'm just going to do like a monthly wrap up and count this for what I read in June. So anyways, um, with that, let's just quickly go over the bingo prompts that I completed and then I'll go and talk about each volume. So first up in this corner over here is my, um, yeah, Rachel was awesome and made this bingo board for us. She wanted to put all the colors of the rainbow in it. She put um, each host's favorite. And then also she put a kink or a fetish that um, like for each host. So I will go over that in a second. <laughs> um, so first starting off in this corner is read a manga with red on the cover. And then the next one is read uh, Bazaar's favorite. <laughs> And um, the reason why I put this in my favorite is because I read the first volume, the first four volumes, and I absolutely loved it. Next up is um, read a Yaoi. That's obviously a Yaoi. Next up is read a Dylan, Dylan's favorite. Don't call me dirty is one of his favorites. Then next up is finish a series. I read all ten volumes. I buddy read it with my really good friend Di, so I'm really glad that she got me to. Um, finally completed the series, which I've stalked, like, I read the first four volumes, like, two years ago. So, um, yeah. Then, next up is a one-shot, Don't Call Me Daddy, which is a follow-up to Don't Call Me Dirty, but it is still a one-shot, so it counts. I actually, um, really fast had, um, this right here, Our Not So Lonely Planet Travel Guide, and I had to switch them out, which was not that big a deal, because they both, well, this one fit that, and then, um, put it as a one shot in this volume one so I didn't even see the volume one on there it it pretty much ends but I wanted more so I'm actually really glad that they're coming out with um or coming out in English with another volume but anyways um so one shot then next up is purple on the cover that purple aesthetic next up is read one of Rachel's favorites this one she really did like, but I wanted to get to Therapy Game. I just ran out of time. So this is the one before Therapy Game, I do believe. Uh, everyone tells me to read this one first. So um, it still counts as one of Rachel's favorites, but her real favorite that I wanted to get to was Therapy Game. But I will um, probably reread this because this was literally the last day. And um, I wanted to finish, like, I think I had, like, two more challenges. I had three more challenges the last day, and I read one of them, and then... Um, with no sleep, I got called into work, so they were literally blowing six different people, managers, employees, were blowing up my phone to come into work, and, um, <laughs> so I was like, damn it, I am going to finish these volumes before I go in. Like, they can wait, and so people were like, how much longer? When are you going to be here? When are you going to be here? So, like, I was trying to read, and then I also had to walk my dogs, and I was, like, in the middle of laundry, and, like... I was just so stressed, so I need to reread this is the point I was getting at, but um, I did finish it, so it does count. <laughs> Next up is a Yuri, so um, I read, I had to change this one, I really wanted to read After Hours, which is a three volume, but I had to change it to this um, one shot, so then that way I could actually finish it. I think this was the one that I read on the last day. 
I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if Yuri's my thing or not, but um, I enjoyed it for what it is. I thought it was cute. I give it uh, three stars. Anyways, we're not talking about. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go over everything uh, later, and then next up is start a new series, Thigh High. That one I, I was also thinking about using for one of Dylan's King Swatches Beefy Men, but I changed it because uh, that's like a new series to start. So I put that there. Next going down is Yellow on the cover. And next going over is glasses. Um, one of my favorite characters in this series um, has glasses. He's kind of like a side character, but he plays a major role in it. Um, and then he disappears. But anyways, um, enough with that. <laughs> I'll explain later when I'm talking about them. And then this is a free space orange on the cover. I wanted to use that one for yellow, but then I couldn't find anything for orange. So then I... It has its orange in it, and then, yeah. So anyways, um, next up is we did LGBTQIA plus work. And then, so I wanted to use all 10 volumes because I want to use one volume per prompt. So, um, yeah, I used all 10 volumes of After School Nightmare. And then next up is read your favorite ma manga that's um, LGBTQ related, and that is After School or read your favorite manga ka. and I've read so many titles by Set to No Mezurio. Um, I read X Days. Um, she writes another Yaoi. Um, Corner Mouse Dreams of Cheese, and um, also there's some other titles <laughs> that I have, so I don't know why they're not coming to my mind. Anyways, I really enjoy her work, and she's my favorite manga guy, so I put that there. Um, then, next is Blue on the cover. Next is a bi character, and um, one of them, or both of them, are bisexual, maybe. Um, it counts. And then, next is uh, Brain Dolls. I use that one for white hair, and my dog wants to get in. Because this one keeps scratching. Um... Was this guy right here and i literally bought this because of that and then an office romance is right here then next is not sublime title i shall never return volume one and then next is beefy men he draws um yaoi and he draws beefy men this is my digital only title it's like um honeymoon has been or something like that and so that's why it's not there, but I did read it. <laughs> it's um, was by Sublime, and then this one is green on the cover, and then this one is a short story. And I'm gonna go with my dog in, and I will come back and I'll go over what each of these titles is about and what I thought about them. And I had such a great reading month. As you can see, my five star pile, my which is the series in um, two uh, volumes. Then uh, my four stars, which is six volumes. My three stars, which is five volumes. There's a digital title in there. And then there's my two and one star pile, which is right there. So overall, I had so much fun with this readathon. I just decided to, like I said before, cancel the blog for week four and just have a wrap up. So I'm gonna be doing this as a wrap up for the month of June. And of course I read only LGBTQ plus titles. So yeah, let's just begin. I'm gonna do it in the, the star rating like I did last year from lowest star to uh, five. So it's gonna be from one to five. And yeah, let's just get started. I shall never return. And I buddy read this with Lindsay Tut, and we both DNF'd it. Um, not that I never want to return um, to it, but I, I don't know. It just wasn't making sense. It was kind of going together. I just really couldn't get into it. I actually DNF'd it during a readathon. I was like. None of the, I guess I could have made the other volumes work with other prompts, but I was just like, really don't want to read a five volume series. 
it just kind of sucks that this one wasn't as good as I want it to be as it took me forever to track down the last two volumes to it and um yeah I did buy the OVA um so I will be watching that just for you know just for fun I really want to watch that it might, it might actually help me understand what's going on in the manga better um if they follow the same kind of premise of the story but um yeah overall for now one star um yeah I I really wanted to finish the series I just kind of ran out of time and then me not liking it kind of definitely you know helped with the dnf but yeah moving on to a two-star read brain doll and if you all couldn't have guessed um by i think i read this in week uh two it's a vlog and i i kind of liked it <laughs> it was quite funny i caught myself laughing in a lot of places it's just the overall story I did not get it was kind of like what am I reading um <laughs> yeah so sadly it's a two star and that doll on the front cover is creepy it's pretty much um they have to help dolls right souls get trapped in dolls and they have to help the souls um go beyond and it wasn't really lgbtq um like i wanted it to be it's more of just these pretty guys and they're obviously too close to like too close to each other but like they're not you know really doing anything and then one dude likes this chick but it's really not a chick in fact the guy on the cover is actually a player and sleeps with a lot of chicks so um, yeah, but overall, um, I don't recommend it, but I don't mind reading it. It was funny, so there's that. Next up for my three-star read, Deflowering the Boss. Pretty much exactly what you would expect out of this title. <laughs> um, it's pretty much about this. They find out that the boss is a virgin. He blurts it out when he's drunk, and yeah, it kind of goes from there. People or make people in the office are making fun of him. They actually have like a work party where uh, people are like laughing at him. This guy over here has been friends with him. I do believe before they started working together, or they worked together a long time. Um, but he always he had to actually move in with the boss for like a month in between. Um, running out of place and being able to move into a new place. So since the boss and him were really good friends, he moved in and you kind of already know what will happen. But literally, um, he was like, so the boss wanted to just lose his virginity and he was just kind of like, I don't care who it's with, uh, hire me a sex worker. Um, and let me just lose my virginity that way. And this guy right here is like, no, I'm in love with you. Um, give me your virginity and I will leave forever. And then the boss is like, oh, well, I loved you too. Let's just be together. Ha ha ha. So, um, I enjoyed it. It was, it was fun and the sex was hot and I enjoyed it. Um, second time reading it, honestly didn't want to read it again, but I guess I could have dug deeper, but I was kind of running out of time and I just wanted to finish that prompt. So that's why I reread it. Um, enjoyed it. We'll read it again in the future, but in like a 10 year span. <laughs> so there's that, but yeah, I recommend it if you can get your hands on it. I don't know how out of print it is, um, but it's by June. So if you see it out and about in the wild, definitely pick it up. So a solid three stars. Next up, this was a gift from Rachel, which is one of the hosts. If you didn't know, I'm looking Dylan and Rachel down below in the comments. So definitely go check their channels out. It, this is Kamal, um, and Rachel sent it to me because she couldn't vibe with it, and I completely see why. She actually wrote to me. A note 
So that was, um, cause it's been sitting on my shelf for about, um, since Christmas and, uh, and it's, it was a really nice surprise opening up and seeing that note in there from her. So, um, if she watches this, then, uh, thank you. <laughs> I actually forgot to tell her that when I talked to her earlier, but, um, I should probably text her. But anyways, um, yeah, so it was just, I enjoyed it. It was cute. It was sweet. But, um, I just didn't vibe with the age difference. Um, this dude right here, he is 18 years old, but he seems and acts a lot younger and he just moved out of his parents' house. And yeah, he goes and helps this guy like cook and clean. And this guy is kind of, kind of too forceful and too in this young boy's space. And it's just, there's just something about it that I did not like. Um, granted the boy never said no. Um, it is of age even over here in the West. Uh, there's just something about it that I did not vibe with me. So I totally see where Rachel is coming from. It was cute. I did enjoy it. I had a good time reading it. Um, so yeah, if you, I guess if you see it out and give it a try, but it definitely wasn't, <laughs> there's definitely, definitely issues with this one. So, um, yeah, he was just too, um, he just took to advantage of the situation at hand um, for me and yeah. Next up is, this was obviously the Yuri prompt. I married my best friend to shut my parents up. And this one was just a really cute, um, simple, I've, I haven't read that many years to be honest. So I can't really tell you like, if it was good or not, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was really cute. I thought it was kind of cliche and I wouldn't say cliche cause that whole entire trope of like this whole entire setup of like marrying someone to shut your parents up isn't exactly a thing, but it's kind of like one of her best friend um, has a crush on her or is in love with her and kind of takes advantage of the situation of her parents pressuring her to get married and suggest hey why don't you just marry me and then um kind of gets closer and then that you know has to live together to prove that they're married and you know so that kind of leads to something else and yeah it was cute i enjoyed it i recommend it i guess if you like yuri but um i haven't read that much so i don't really know but um yeah i, I really liked it so Next up is T Tough Love Baby. I also read this with Lindsay Tut. Um, she did not enjoy it as much as I did. I really enjoyed it. It is about, um, pretty much about this guy that is dating, um, used to date this chick in the past and when he comes back, um, he left because he started having feelings for her younger brother and he comes back and ends up living in the same apartment complex that they do and the shenanigans and yeah I just thought I don't know I thought it was hot and I really enjoyed it and I thought about uh, at first I gave it four stars but compared to my four star stack it is not a four star it is a three star um so yeah like I guess I just, I think I need to make a video of how I, how I need to rate my, my stars just for fun. Like, I know it's just for fun, but like, it changed because, uh, I'll go over it here in a second, but a one that is in my four star rating, I used to be a five. And then when I read some fives, I'm like, no, this is not, doesn't equal up to that. I really enjoyed it, but it's not. It doesn't give me that hype that, or this like warm feeling that these five stars give me. Um, so yeah.
But anyways, I really enjoyed it. Lindsay didn't like it. I loved it. I thought it was very, it was very smutty and tropey and I loved it. I loved it. But yeah. I would say I really liked it. <laughs> Ones that I really loved, um, surprisingly, is uh, Electric Hands. And uh, this was for the short story, like, prompt. And um, it's been sitting on my shelf forever. I thought it was just going to be a whole bunch of, like, trashy short, short stories. And um, didn't really think I would, like, enjoy really any of them. Because um, they're so short, but... Yes, <laughs> I really, really did enjoy this. It's a pretty much every single short story focuses on a different fetish. And this one right here is this guy has a thing for hands. And yeah, it was quite fun. I was, I, I liked the first two stories or the first three stories the most because the first two stories were uh, part one and part two of the hands one. I like the second one. Oh, I forgot what it was about. Hold on. Let's see. The second one was Brothers Battle. Of course I would love that one the most. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, so yeah, let's just move on. Um, but yeah, it was just a really, really good time and I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much. Um, 801365 actually got this in her haul video after I read it and I never heard anyone talking about this title and she said it was actually out of print hard to find so that's interesting I actually I'm kind of curious to look it up on eBay and see how much this is going for because I see it like I don't see people talking about it but I see it in my secondhand shop quite a few different times I just never picked it up because I'm short stories so, um, yeah, I was just pleasantly surprised about how much I enjoyed this title. Next up, this was the host buddy read. The three of us buddy read this one. Um, like two peas in a pod. Surprisingly, this was by the same manga that wrote, Don't Call Me Dirty and Don't Call Me Daddy. I just found that out um, as I was reading it. I saw it in the back and I was like, this all looks similar and... I checked the name and it matched. I love doing that in my collection. But anyways, um, Two Peas in a Pod. This is one that I originally gave five stars. Rachel gave it five stars. Dylan gave it four stars. I'm leaning more on the four star side just because the titles in my five star, like this, this was so cute, so sweet. I highly recommend it. Absolutely loved it. Um, it's about these two um, friends that are sim really similar, like same clothes, um, they act alike, um, one guy, well, they kind of fall in love with the same girl, maybe, yeah, it is just, it's really cute, really sweet, I really enjoyed it, really recommend it, um, but, um, yeah, like I was saying, it just wasn't, what didn't live up to 100% expectation, but it's kind of just funny how people like like different things. Tangent, I know. But Rachel gave one of my five stars that I thought was absolutely amazingly perfect um, a four star. So this is kind of interesting. But anyways, moving on. Um, highly recommend that. Next up is Thigh High. <laughs> um, I thought about doing this one for Dylan's um, Beefy Men prompt. But I decided to put it underneath uh, Start a New Series and this was so much fun it was so funny it's literally about this guy that wants to be accepted in and make friends in a all boys school and the only catch is that all the boys wear women's clothes um, it is so funny I cannot wait for volume two I was laughing all the way through it was just um it was surprisingly relatable this guy was just so awkward and trying to fit in and um i'm raising my hand but you can't see me um but yeah that's me in a nutshell um so yeah moving on <laughs> but yeah highly rec hi haha <laughs> highly recommend it next is one that i read as i was being called into work <laughs> so <laughs> um yeah i 
need to reread this because I sped read it. But what I did pick up out of it is that they're obsessed with rabbits and it was really cute and I loved it. And, um, yeah, and I don't know, I just didn't, I, the whole entire sex worker thing just kind of threw me off a little bit. So that's why it kind of took it down a star for me, but, um, I still really enjoyed it. I cannot wait to wear it read therapy game and I heard that that's even better so I was going to supposed to do it for this read -a I just didn't have time but yeah I enjoyed it I highly recommend it of what I remember but I do need to go back and read it so I guess I shouldn't have even put this in a star level but um yeah I liked it a lot so there you go the next two um don't call me dirty and don't call me, um, don't call me daddy, um, is the follow-up. Don't call me dirty is about this guy right here, and he just recently broke up with his boyfriend, and, well, his boyfriend doesn't want to get out, so he broke up, kind of broke up with him, and, um, then he kind of gets feelings for this guy right here, the homeless guy that, um, everyone looks down on and um, it's just kind of there getting closer and acceptance and don't go with what society wants you to then over here is um, about this boy's dad and his love which they his dad obviously appears in the series but also his love comes back um, in the series because his dad's love is or they were like childhood friends that fell in love um i do believe childhood college or something anyways they were friends and they um they like never really like admitted their feelings for each other or like they did but like it was just so like far-fetched for them that um they, they kind of went separate ways and he and then the his dad's friend <laughs> Um, came back to um, kind of close down the the town's um, store, like convenience store, that he actually um, helps out at. So both I recommend highly. You obviously don't have to read uh, one to understand the other one, but I highly recommend starting with this one and then reading this one and just read them both. I'm just going to say that you have to read them both. Because they're both really good. And one of them is Dylan's pick. And the other one is we do run shot for the challenge. Moving right along to my five star section. Um, should go faster as one's a huge series. But um, yeah. So this is one of my new favorite mangas of all time. BL fans love my brother. It is really not underneath the whole entire... Um, new Tokyo Pop BL line, but it is definitely BL related. It is about this otaku guy that traps himself or chooses to trap himself into his bedroom for four years and he just draws yaoi, like fan yaoi for people and he makes um like fan art, fan comics, stuff like that and he made a work and he got really big and all the girls and I guess the guys too, um, she didn't show that part, or like fan boying over him. And the only catch is, is he's like kind of too shy to go to the conventions and stuff. So he <laughs> tricks his sister into being kind of like the face of the company. And it's just really cute. And they're his and his sister's dynamic and, um, them getting along and she helps him draw and, like, you know, like inking in the sketches and she's obsessed with meat. Thought that was hilarious. This was just so, it, it, it like checked every single box for me. It had like a taku culture. It had, you know, drawing a yaoi. It had uh, people that are shut in that don't like other people. It had, you know, conventions, you know, it just, I just absolutely love this and I highly recommend it. Probably my favorite read um, of the whole entire month is 
our not so lovely planet travel guide and this was just um i also buddy read this with um rachel and um dylan read it too i don't know he, i don't think he read it for the re in this month but i know that he read it and all three of us absolutely loved it uh this one that rachel gave four stars um i i just this is just so perfect to me like this is exactly what i want in a manga it is just so wholesome and sweet and um makes me cry and i want to reread it now let's just first say i absolutely love the art i would not show you i just i'm just scared to show inside um to be honest um with everything going that went on um but it's just the art is absolutely stunning i'm gonna go ahead and just show you page so tokyo pop please don't um, come after me. Um, but look at that. Just like, I absolutely love the art. The art is just freaking gorgeous and stunning and <laughs> amazing. And it's just different. And like the colors are vibrant. And even if it's in black and white, you just know, like you can just tell that the colors are just vibrant of these people and everything going on and the the backgrounds of the city and where they travel to they're so detailed and oh, i just love it it's about these um this couple one is more open than the other so it's just kind of like them kind of feeling out each other and um them kind of like relating to each other and um one is kind of like always worries the other one's more of a free spirit so it's like opposites attract type deal and one of them talks the other one into traveling around the world with them and at the end of their journey they're gonna get married and um the and in this volume um i actually found out happily because at the end of this volume it kind of like ends but they don't like ever get back but i just thought that, that was kind of like you know how it's supposed to be so like it does it does end but you want more and there is a volume two coming i think there's only be two volumes but which um short and sweet <laughs> but it definitely could go on longer um they actually could make a whole entire like series of this with each place because like just the how they dive into showing us the the scenery of the places that they travel to they even give us my favorite part recipes for the food of different countries like how awesome is that so you can actually like follow it and make it or attempt to make it in my case um because i mess up on everything but i i don't cook but anyways um it was just so like fascinating watching them first off they're such a cute couple and i love them so much and they're two of my favorite characters now and then them just just seeing them, their dynamic together, and then also seeing them meet other people in other countries was so much fun. Seeing the scenery, learning about the other places that they visit, learning about um, like their cultures and like I said, their food. And, you know, it's just, it was just such a wonderful experience. And I just, please, if you just pick one thing out of this whole entire thing, please pick this one. <laughs> Like it was just, I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. Going on my top, top, top favorite mangas. So not even just an LGBTQ or a BL manga, just just in general, one of my favorite mangas. So anyways, um, next let's dive into this 10 volume series by my um, favorite mangaka ever. And I actually, um, Maeve ever reading actually told me that I'm missing a title in English that's out, so I do need to track that one down. But I have everything else by her, and it is After School Nightmare. <laughs> I buddy read this with my friend Di. Thank you so much for reading with me because you made it so much more enjoyable. Like talking to you about how you feel about you know as we went along, it was just such a good time to buddy read that with you. But um, anyways. <sighs> This one was a trip, <laughs> a trip. Like I could probably make a whole entire 
separate video um, on this. Actually, I will link down below a um, podcast about this that I actually listened to the first part because I read the first part of this a long time ago. And they have um, two parts. So I'll link both of them down below. Um, it's I watch them all the time, but I can't think of the name. It's like Shoujo Tell It Again, something like that. But um, I love it, so I'll link that down below. Um, I should probably ask first, but I don't think they mind. But anyways, um, so like if you're more inter- if you were interested in this, definitely go check that one out. But it is pretty much about this individual right here, and they are struggling with their um, sexuality, whether they are male or female. They have male on top and female on the bottom, and um, as you find out as the series progresses that they want to be male because they want to be presented as you know more strong more protecting of others and just their dynamic in the series with this whole entire love triangle going on was fantastic and that was probably my favorite part there's also a supernatural element um, all the way through it of where they are trapped inside of the nightmare and they have to face their real life fear in the dream and they're portrayed in the dream of how they view themselves in real life and they have to fight for a key and whoever gets the key gets to graduate the, the class and they vanish. So um, yeah, well, wow, I actually kind of summed that up better than I've ever summed it up before. Um, normally when I try to explain that, it's a little bit more difficult and doesn't make sense. But anyways, I think I got the gist of that that time. I'm quite impressed. <laughs> but anyways, um, like, let's just check out these covers. And I I bet, they, I bet it when I was reading, I brought it to work. Um, that's such a freaking pretty cover. Like, her artwork is just stunning. And yeah, I just really enjoy this series. Um, definitely one of my new f- favorite all-time mangas. I knew it would be after the, just four volumes. The only thing that I do, but it's like me personally, like my um, personal fault, is I forget. Um, like, you know how the story progresses and there's like a beginning where you get introduced to characters, then there's the middle part where like all the action happens and then there's the conclusion well (laughs) my problem is is like I forget in the middle like how close to the end I am and I think that there's always going to be like a lot more so like when it gets to the end I'm like oh wow that was fast um but that's just me personally I feel like I need to realize like everything going on and realize like kind of paste it in my mind better, I guess. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. Let me know down in the comments if you um, do the same thing. But, like, I was on volume 9, and I was like, this is, like, wrapping up. I'm like, wait a minute. There's only 10 volumes. Like, you know, so, like, it definitely could have gone on longer. They um, they introduced two new characters towards the end, too. But um, they had to have new classmates for classmates that left, so that makes sense. But all the other characters, even if they were in just one dream, and then they won. So, like, they introduced them and they left. They, like, fleshed them out and they gave them more character development and, like, why they were there. And why they turned into that, you know, why they turned into that in the nightmare and stuff like that. But these last um, two characters just kind of were there. And then it ended, so they could have definitely went on, but um, I see why they really didn't, because the main characters, it, it their journey ended. <laughs> but um, this was just a fantastic supernatural thriller mystery, um, gender, identity. Um, I just loved it. It was great. And yeah. Anyways, I read uh, 25 volumes this month, and I couldn't be more happier, and hopefully um, next month I will have some good reads. I'm definitely not going for 25 volumes, Um, but 
yeah, anyways, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this readathon, and I really hope that you guys participate next year. Rachel and me were talking today about um, doing another one in September, so I don't know if I was supposed to spoil that or not, but she doesn't watch my videos, so it doesn't matter. Um, but anyways, um, throwing shade, um, watch her, like, this is the only one that she watches, but anyways, um, yeah, so, and I'm thinking about doing, like, just LGBTU sprints on the page, just for fun, so, like, once a month, um, just kind of going on there and being like, hey, I'm hosting a sprint, so look forward to that, I will link our Twitter, our Twitter, and our Instagram things down below, so go add that readathon, and yeah, I hope everyone, um, is safe, and I will talk to you next video. Hey guys, and I completely forgot to mention the digital title <laughs> that I was going to mention. It is called Husband Honeymoon, and it's by Sublime. I gave it three stars, and it was enjoyable. And um, if you want to know more of my thoughts on that, check week three the vlog out. I will link all the vlogs that I do for this readathon, and I'll link um, Rachel's vlog um, as well when she puts it up. And yeah. Uh, see you guys.